Hi, this video is intended for the Just One More Tack faction of the Titchmarsh Marina Sailing, Turning and Bodging Group. Anyone else who comes across this video on YouTube or to anybody I send it to, you are welcome. Basically it concerns digital readouts made of tyre depth gauges, which I'll get onto in a moment, but just a short background of the, why I've made the why I made these digital readouts. I recently purchased a Chester Model B combination mill drill lathe for a project I hope to start on quite shortly. Uh, these are a Chinese manufacturer. Basically quite good. Uh, I'm new to machining. I had done a small amount of turning in the past but very very limited. And one of the things that I do find quite difficult on the lathe is the dial indicators. Just waiting for the plane to go overhead. One of the um, reasons I chose this lathe is because of its large swing. Uh, it's quite a gangly sort of looking machine in my view. The chuck is very high off the bed but uh, it's quite slim but that is uh, the main reason I chose this particular model. I haven't got room in this very small workshop for a larger lathe. I couldn't fit a MIFID in, I couldn't fit, or a box foot MIFID, anything like that. And most of the other small Chinese lathes wouldn't have been big enough for my purpose. I certainly couldn't fit a million as well, so I've gone for this particular machine. Now to get onto the digital readouts themselves, uh, the reason I went for this is one of the things I did discover when I had the lathe was the cross, I think called it cross head, cross feed uh, and the lead screw. One, uh, I work in Imperial, I want to work in Imperial, I feel far more comfortable with Imperial measurements. Uh, on the cross feed, it, uh, it's graduated, one complete turn is 60 thou and on the lead screw one complete turn is 80 thou I believe. Now this seems an odd number when you're trying to put a feed in of a sort of three quarters of an inch or something like that trying to calculate the number of revolutions I did find quite difficult. So I thought when I first started using the lathe that at some stage I would have to have a um, proper digital readout but they are rather expensive they are ones in the Chester catalogue and others are available the ones with the large screens and the slides along but they do work out very expensive and it's not something I would want to spend money on at the moment. Before I bought the lathe one of our little sailing group uh, JD already ticked me off about these tyre gauge, uh, sorry, not, uh, tire depth, digital tyre te depth indicators uh, could be turned into a, a form of digital readout so that's what I've done and now we will uh, move along have a closer look at those and the way I've manufactured them. The digital readouts in situ very strong I think they're called neodium magnets something like that on the base as you can see six on each one clamped to the base positioned wherever you need them and then another small couple of neodymium magnets on the end so that as the, you operate the lead screw the carry moves On, the, on YouTube there are various versions of these, uh, I've seen the Mark 1s, the Mark 2s, the Mark 3s. They started off, some first people started off with springs internally, you milled out a little section had a return spring because uh, when you purchase these there's two webs on there. Um, I will get a picture and show that in, in a minute um, of one as they are purchased. Um, there's a slight tension spring just to make this a bit stiffer so that when it's being used as a tyre depth gauge it, uh, it is not quite so free and it stays where it's put basically. That needs to come out. 
on the earlier version I was saying somebody uh, what people were doing was milling out the inside and putting a return spring to make uh, make this come back again uh, let me think which way around yeah make it push out like that so that it will be pushed in by your lathe and then would automatically spring out again but then the later version used these neodium or whatever they're called magnets on the end so that it touches on your crosshead as I've just tried to show you or your lead screw whatever with my one oh yeah the ones I've seen on on YouTube they seem to be using a lot of aldite and they've sealed the whole lot up so you can't get to it again but I wanted to try and go one step further so I went down the road of making a sub base so I will undo these screws on the bottom Uh, aluminium sub base, all the screws removed. Just got to correction. Don't use that bit. Right, aluminium sub base, screws removed. These are the four screw holes which we originally had the small self tappers in. This just lifts off of there, fires it off. Cool. Come off. There we go. And that's your scale, all your workings inside. The four screws went through in there, the original ones, and that's where I've tapped it out 8BA. So going back to that, that assembly aluminium plate onto there and then whatever plate you want to put on the bottom you can make up any sort of combination on mine I've altered the position of these magnets I've put two at one end so I've got four at the front there and I've got four at the back there just in case uh, I wanted to change the application slightly so there you have it I put the screws back in again Hopefully that is clear enough to be able to see. The screws back in, so we have the aluminium base. Then the metal base, and this plate here, it's just a thin piece of steel stock which I had. They do stick these magnets. Go on. So the magnets, 12 by 2 millimeter, just milled a or just drilled a two millimeter ten uh, twelve millimeter hole in the base reamed it out and they just fit it perfectly and that steel plate just fits between the two and forms a nice magnetic block that is then screwed back onto there on my particular lathe I intend to make a little angle plate because it'll be easier to use um, to mount on there rather than mounting it straight on the top and again I'll give order some more of the magnets so there we are uh, that's all the various components hope you